Sumie is the art of Japanese ink painting. This art form originated in China, but was brought to Japan over 600 years ago. In traditional Sumie painting, only black ink is used, but the artist can create many different values by adding water to the ink, making everything from the lightest grays to the blackest blacks. In Sumie painting, landscapes are very popular. Not only do they show the land and water, but also plants, animals, even people. Check out this hilarious frog. Sumie artists usually use very special tools, like round, soft bristle brushes, and special inks, maybe even an ink stone to grind a dry ink stick with water. Many artists use already prepared liquid ink. But since we're not at school, you might not have a lot of fancy materials for Sumie painting. Not to worry! Today, you're going to practice painting with just the most basic materials. Paper, very basic black watercolor paint, and a brush that came with the paint set. No fancy brushes here. Oh, you will also need some water and a paper towel or rag. For today's lesson, you will need to know about different brush strokes. Thin line, thick line, thin and thick line, bamboo leaf, press stroke, side stroke, and freestyle line. To make thin lines, only use the tip of the bristles. For thick lines, push down a little, applying pressure so the bristles spread out. For thin and thick lines, you vary the amount of pressure, pushing down and lifting up pushing down and lifting up. The bamboo leaf is similar. Start with the tip of the bristles, push down and lift. Start with the tip of the bristles, push down and then lift. The press stroke is easy. Push down and lift up. Push down and lift up. For the side stroke, touch the entire side of the bristles to the paper, then drag sideways across the paper. The freestyle line is just what it sounds like. Touch the bristles of your brush to the paper and then paint a line that curves up and down and in and out. Now that you know the strokes, let's paint. Let's try a simple landscape. Use a side stroke for a mountain. Press strokes to make a flower. You could add dots in the center. Thin lines for the stem and for the leaves. Small press strokes for trees far away. Bigger press strokes for bamboo leaves for trees that are closer. Perhaps a side stroke for some ground features. And some light gray clouds. Remember, you can make the paint lighter by adding more water. Now let's paint some bamboo. 
use a side stroke to paint bamboo stalks with sections about two or three inches long. Paint thin lines to separate the sections of bamboo and to make bamboo branches. Of course, the bamboo leaf stroke makes bamboo leaves. Let's paint some animals next. Mix a lot of water and just a little bit of paint to make light gray. Then use the freestyle stroke to paint a snail shell. Maybe I'll try a second one. Add a thick, curvy line for the snail's head and foot. Before I can finish my snails, I need to let them dry, so I think I'll start painting a mouse. Light gray oval for the head and a larger curved shape for the body. While that's drying, I'll go back to my snails. Very black ink has more pigment and less water. Eye stalks and marks on the shell finish the snail off. To finish the mouse, paint black, thin lines for the eyes, ears, whiskers, and tail. Here is one way to paint a rabbit. Start with light gray paint or ink. Use lots of water. Circle for the body, a rounded triangle for the head. Bamboo leaf strokes for the ears. When that dries, add an eye, whiskers, and a tail. You don't have to stop there. If your rabbits are hungry, add some carrots. Birds are fun to paint. Try this. Start with a curved side stroke for the head. Add two curved strokes for the body, a dot for the eye, and a thin line for the bill, a perch for the bird, perhaps a branch. And some claws for the feet. Use press strokes to make some tail feathers. Here's another bird. Looks like I didn't leave much room for the tail. of birds will you make? Have fun with this and be creative. Today we'll finish with pandas. Pandas are native to China, which is fitting because Sumie painting originated in China. Pandas are really fun to paint. Two black circles for ears, two black eye patches, and a little nose thin black lines to make the face, and mouth, and four thick black side strokes for the front and back legs. This panda is sitting up. Here's another panda, this time lying down. The face is the same but this panda has its back showing. Two front legs are visible, but only one hind leg. Finish with the tail. Here's a panda that might be walking toward you. And this one's lying on its back.
you're going to have so much fun with Sumie painting. I cannot wait to see what you create. Just remember, practice, practice, practice. That's what I've been doing. And when you're ready for more, check out this awesome book, Super Simple Sumie by Ivan Polka. It's where I got all my ideas. Have fun with this and remember to share your art with your teachers.